Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I'm John, and as always, thank you so much for being here. A good topic? We probably all have an answer to. Let's do it. What's the worst physical pain you have ever been in? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. I received a catastrophic eye injury in my freshman year of college. A friend of mine was throwing CDs down a hallway overhanded like shurikens. I was standing behind him and in a freak occurrence that my friend and I still speak about in hushed tones, a CD whipped around in midair as soon as he released it and hit me in the open eye. The CD hung by its edge in my eyeball for a moment vertically before sliding out. There was very little pain at the moment of impact and my first reaction was to burst into laughter. I then experienced a unique, exquisitely terrible sensation. It seemed like a long needle of pure white light was being driven through my brain. The pain was so intense that I couldn't breathe, and I stood motionless with my mouth hanging open until I gasped and collapsed against a wall. I was later told my optic nerve was spasming. I drove myself to the emergency room. Thankfully, I was still on my parents' insurance and was put on painkillers. The next day, found me at the eye doctor, where he performed tests that mainly involved filling my eye with drops of stinging phosphorescent fluids. The doctor placed a medicated contact lens on my mangled cornea, and I was sent home with pills and ointments. It was a week and a half before I returned to the eye doctor. My eye was healing nicely, and I was in good spirits. The doctor was joking around with me, pleased with my recovery. He put a small brace on my injured eye, think clockwork orange, and went to remove the medicated contact. Now, I'm not an eye doctor. I don't know what I would do if I noticed the patient's eye had begun to heal over a medicated contact, but I'm sure there's an established method of removing a contact lens that doesn't involve peeling the patient's eye like a grape. The doctor slowly and firmly pulled on the contact lens, and a strip of my eye started peeling away with it, like the skin from a hangnail. The strip sliced deeper into my eye the more he pulled. He kept going, tugging on the contact steadily, grimacing and sucking air through his teeth. Through the clouded vision, I could see a clear mass an inch, now two inches, from my face, still attached to my eye by a thin strip of fibrous eye meat. I felt thick fluid pouring down the side of my face. Apparently, I had started to scream. My recovery took two additional months. 22 years ago, I sliced the tip of my finger off with a box knife when I was 14, but that wasn't the painful part. The idiots I worked for at the time, farm animal supply stores, put this powder on it to stop the profuse bleeding. The powder, used for horse injuries, crusted over on the way to the emergency room. To get the powder off so they could fix it, the doctor had to scrub away at my finger stump for 30 minutes with a hard bristled brush. I was told that two sets of parents left the waiting room with their children because my screams were so agonizing. I flipped over the handlebars of my bike. I headed face first towards a brick walkway, but luckily my teeth broke my fall. Unfortunately, I ended up breaking off the bottom parts of three front teeth, exposing the nerve in the process. I did this too late, so all the dental offices were closed so I had to spend the night with every breath I took pulling air past my exposed nerve. As an addendum, that tooth ended up getting infected, and during the resulting root canal procedure, not enough Novocaine was used, and I nearly ripped off the dentist's arm when he started poking into unnumbed tissue. This was actually only two weeks ago. I was cleaning the outside of my ear with a cotton swab, and one of my dogs got excited about something and ran into the back of my knee knocking me off balance and causing the swab to slide forcefully deep into my ear canal. The immediate pain I felt was so bad I don't even know how to describe it. I just collapsed on the floor and sat there in agony for about three minutes. I couldn't move. I couldn't even make a sound. I was mustering the willpower to reach for my phone to text my wife for help. She was just upstairs, but I was still unable to speak when the pain started to abate. Over the next 30 minutes, it vanished entirely. For the next five days, I would randomly hear a rapid tapping in my eardrum that would decrease in frequency and eventually die off over 10 to 20 seconds. But now I'm back to normal. 
One morning I moved an old motorcycle onto my property. It was lying on its side, and I just flipped it over onto the other side. A small motorcycle is not difficult to lift, but I was turned slightly and felt a little ping in my back when it did. Not painful at all, just a slight pressure like somebody tapping on it once. Through the rest of the morning, I noticed my back getting tighter and not quite feeling right when I stood up straight. Sort of like the curve, just above the hips wasn't flexing right. That afternoon, I was walking up my driveway when blam, this shock of pain hit my back just above my hips, like somebody driving a knife into it. I halfway bent over, and each time I moved, there was another stab. I managed to get down onto the ground, but it still hurt, and the ground was cold. Each time I moved, it stabbed me again. I finally got into the house and into bed, and the next day, it was pretty much locked up. A friend came over and gave me Valium. I took it and brought my knees up into the fetal position while lying on my back, and within an hour, there was this dramatic pop, as it apparently moved back into place. The relief was complete. Since then, I've had the problem on and off for maybe 20 years or more. Each time, it would begin with a lifting while turning, a slight pressure that got worse. Sometimes, it'd pop back. Other times, it'd come back gradually. I haven't had a problem with it for the last 15 years or so. The thing that made it so bad was that when it was out, you never knew when you'd step wrong and get that stab. It's that anticipation that keeps stress level high and that fear of the coming pain which makes it so bad. Not nearly as bad as being run over by a car, but one time the dentist wanted to fill a cavity and was going to drill a bit to make a clean surface. He said it could be done quickly without anesthetic, but to pound on the chair or say anything if I felt pain. He started drilling and, sure enough, I forgot to pound on the chair, but instead gripped the F out of it and began to breathe in deeply as I felt what was probably an exposed nerve or something being directly shredded at hundreds of thousands of effing RPM. At through what was probably a few seconds but felt like minutes, I managed to tap out. If you've ever had an exposed cavity and put sugar or something on it and it felt that wincing pain, it was like that times 1,000. Nerve pain feels like your entire body has become encapsulated in a small area and is being stabbed everywhere. I've had pretty bad falls, kicks in the balls, and straight punches to the gut, but I have to say, that was something else. I can't imagine what the guy who had to cut through his own arm nerves went through. I'm surprised there aren't more tooth or dentist related stories. I know sometimes you can't really tell if the Novocaine or medicine worked and you get that shock of white hot pain, so yeah, not the best, but there's some pretty bad ones on here today, so thanks everyone for sharing. I broke a metacarpal, a bone in my hand, the one behind my ring finger. Not all that painful by itself. Looking at it, I assumed that it was just dislocated, which had happened to me before. So I grabbed my finger in my other hand and yanked it up like I would relocate it. That was the only time I've had what I would call blinding pain. The world got very tiny and far away. When I could see and think again, I was on the floor. I figured out what had happened and went to the hospital. They told me that it was badly broken, but in pretty much the right place, and that they couldn't do anything for it. Gave me a pseudocast. I was hit by a car while hitchhiking on the interstate at night, drunk and wearing dark clothing. Genius at work. I had a fractured tibia, which was painful, but the surgery to fix it involved drilling into the tibia just below the knee, threading a wire down into the marrow, and hooking that up to a whirly gig machine to liquefy said marrow and suck it out. Then a long steel nail is hammered, yes, hammered, down into the space vacated by the marrow to provide stability while the tibial fracture heals. The fracture was a few inches above my ankle. Ouch. I had it removed a few years later. Legs are pretty much as good as new now. I cracked my coccyx, tailbone. I probably spelled it incorrectly. At the beginning of an hour-long football practice in 7th grade, I told the coach that I really needed to lay down and not move. I think I broke something. He looked at me and said, Man up. You can get in line. Oklahoma drills tonight. Oklahoma drills were one-on-one -on -one tackling mixed with up-downs. Up-downs were running in place with your knees hitting your chest then dropping to the ground on your chest, then getting back up and running again. I was sobbing, and the entire team laughed at me and called me a wuss. I don't think they understood the pain I was in. I quit the next day. 
I cut the end of my thumb off with a table saw. You'd think that you'd be able to yank that sucker out of there, but you'd be wrong. The teeth grab your skin and whip your hand around to where they're disappearing under the table. That's where the magic happens. As your appendage is too big to fit in the slot, a negotiation begins between fleshy flesh and hard metal. You'd think metal wins. You'd be wrong. It's bone that breaks up the mediation and goes right out to the reporters outside to say the talks have broken down. That end, it explodes all over your shirt. You think you could pick it up and sew that little nib back on? You'd be wrong. You know all the sawdust under the saw? That's what it does to the wood, and that's what it just did to your opposable digit. So, some of it is gone. You'd think this is the most physically painful experience I've had? You'd be wrong. Kidney stones were way worse. Every time I get one, I'd gladly cut off more of my thumb to end the ordeal. When I was a junior in college, I was admittedly speeding to get to class on my motorcycle. An old woman was flipping a U-turn and I noticed her, but I also knew she had a stop sign and would have to stop at the intersection. She didn't, and I hit her car going about 60. My leg wedged between my bike and her car, and my foot nearly snapped off from the impact. I rolled off her windshield and went flying through the air. My ankle was torn wide open, half an inch of a deeper cut, and I would have lost my foot. I broke my legs, my pelvis bones pretty much exploded. I was in shock or on drugs for a lot of the experience, but the most painful part came when they had to get me off morphine. I remember waking up in the middle of the night and really having to use the bathroom. I was ignorant of all the pain because I had been on drugs for weeks, so I figured I would be alright as long as I was careful. The bathroom was so close. Holy shit. I doubled over the minute I tried to stand on my crutches and went straight to the linoleum. I've never been burned before, but I swear, I felt like my legs were on fire. This was the first time I ever saw that much. I was in so much physical pain that I started vomiting. It was late, and there was no one to help me. I was in excruciating pain, and I started to cry. As the pain increased, I was fairly sure I was going to pass out. I could have screamed for someone, but for some stupid reason, I didn't feel that was the right thing to do. So I crawled, inching my body toward the bathroom with my hands, throwing up every few minutes. The bandage around my ankle started to turn red. It took me about half an hour to go ten feet or so. Any slight movement and the flames around my legs would rage and rage. The short distance was marked by pools of vomit and black or red blood. I got to the toilet, threw up in it, nearly passed out, got myself up and sitting, and peed like a little bitch. I will never forget that night, and I will never take the act of strolling over to a toilet and peeing for granted ever again. 2 AM. I slipped and fell into a glass door at the back of my apartment building. I almost completely severed my right arm at the elbow, severed all tendons, nerves, and arteries. Did you know that your blood actually makes splashing sounds as it hits concrete if you sever an artery? It's the most terrifying experience I can imagine. There's no pain at first, of course. I was just dumbstruck. My arm wouldn't work, but I kept staring at it, trying to bend it back to stop the blood from falling. Eventually, I snapped out of it, used my other arm to grab my now useless hand, and folded the arm back up into my chest a bit. That didn't really stop the blood, which was now pooling at my feet. I started screaming, help, I'm going to die, call an ambulance, as loud as I possibly could. I was swearing profusely as well, just screaming. I knew I needed to get some blood back into my body, and I knew that could only happen with an ambulance, and I knew that someone else had to call them, so I screamed for my life. I knew I wanted to tie off my upper arm or compress the wound, but when I tried to do anything I had to stop holding my arm together, and it would flop open and blood would pour out. Eventually I realized that I was going to die. Too much blood had been lost, and I was getting faint. I decided my best bet was to go out onto the road. If I get hit by a car, nothing is lost, but hopefully it will mean that the ambulance, or someone called one right, will find me quicker. So I did. I walked out into the middle of the road and curled into the fetal position. I calmed my breathing and laid down on an almost severed arm, thinking it would slow the blood flow. I didn't really have any last thoughts before I passed out. Just feelings. Fear, regret, feeling cold. I watched my blood stream from me across the roar of the gutter. So much blood. It was all entirely terrifying. 
I had Guillain Barr syndrome back in 2006. The first symptom was 14 hours of straight, intense leg cramps in both legs that would not let up. When I was finally hospitalized, they had to implant a series of tubes into my chest to perform plasma fissures, essentially draining my blood, separating the plasma to discard it, and giving me fresh plasma. I was given a local anesthetic, which did not work, or he didn't give it enough time, and he proceeded to cut into my chest and neck arteries to implant it, despite my crying and telling him that I could feel it. I felt as they shoved the tubes into my arteries. I felt it even more when they dilated the damn things to allow blood to flow through. Bless the nurses for trying to ask me questions, but the pain was excruciating, and the surgeon's only response was, give her more Valium to make her quiet down. The same issue arose when it came time to take them out. I didn't give it time to take effect. She just gave me a quick shot, snipped the stitches, and yanked the tubes out. That entire illness was one giant exercise in pain. Whenever someone would touch my legs, it felt like they were in a vice. I wouldn't wish that illness on my worst enemy.